The first ADTs that we introduced were the stack and the queue. At the point where we implement when we introduced them, the only way that we knew how to store values for the stack and the queue were using arrays. So we made an array-based stack and an array-based queue. Now we want to highlight the abstract aspect of stacks and queues because we've learned how to store things, store sequences of values in a different way using linked lists. So we're going to start off by implementing our stack, the same stack ADT we created before, but using a linked list. And we should talk about what this looks like pictorially. So notice this is basically a singly linked list, but instead of having a head, it is technically still the head, but I have called it top instead because that's more indicative of what we're talking about here for our stack. And so this would be a stack with a seven and a two. If I were to push a new value on it, the way that that works is I create a new node. Let's say I was pushing the value three onto here. And I would link that new node into the current top. And then top would change to point to that new node. If I push some other value, I'd create a new, another new node, link it in, and it would become top, etc. So I'm just prepending to my singly linked list, which we've seen before is a, is a very easy operation to do. What about popping? Well, when I pop, all I have to do is I have to take this pointer for top and change where it points to. And because nothing now points to the node with the three, the garbage collector will come and pick it up. If I popped again, top would move over here to the two and the garbage collector would also be able to pick up the node with the seven. So that's a pictorial view of what this does. Now we want to actually write code for it. So we're going to come into our project and just to make sure things are happy, I'm going to clean stuff up. So we were working inside of linked list here and I would like to make a new class. Actually, I guess I have the beginnings of a class here called a list stack. Our list stack takes a uh, type parameter, type A, and I am going to use, we'll see if, oh, I need to put an extends in here. under stack Q, we wrote, actually, we just called it stack. So it will ask us, I want to use our stack Q there. And of course, it has a few methods. So if I come into this, I'll copy these, and then I have to get rid of all the comments. Paste. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna do this with a singly linked list. Now, I could wind up doing this by using some singly linked list we've written before, but I kind of wanna highlight the writing of linked lists. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna create a private class for a node. Uh, an interesting thing about the stack is the way that it works, this can actually be a case class because the nodes are never mutated all that's ever changed in our diagram here is what top points to. It points to different nodes, but once I've pushed the seven node onto there and it points to the two, I never change the seven and I never change what it points to. I can just kind of get rid of it by pointing to something after it. So it's perfectly happy here to make my data be an A and my next be a node and for those to be vals, which is what they are by default inside of a case class. And then I need my private var for the top, which is of type node, and it starts off as null. So I like to start with the easy methods. Is empty. Our stack is empty if the top is equal to null. Peak. That's supposed to give back the value that would be popped off next, which would be tops data. Uh, pop. Pop needs to remember the value at tops data, and it's going to give it back in the end, 
but in between those two it's going to set top equal to top dot next to move to the next value in the stack and then push we want to add a new element to this well I need to make a new node that has the value that was passed in and it points to the current top and that new node winds up being the new top. Remember that the right side of the equality is evaluated first, so we wind up keeping track of top before we do an assignment, so we don't lose it in this. And there we go. There is a, a list-based stack. Notice this is a very simple little class. It is actually a fair bit simpler than our array stack, and the reason for that, and is empty and peak are both the same length, pop is very similar, technically this one's actually a little, the, the list based one is a little bit longer, uh, but it's the push that really got more simplified here, and the reason is because this push had to potentially grow the array when we had run out of space. This push allocates a new node every time, and now that can have performance implications, uh, but turns out that calling new on the JVM is a rather fast operation. So in order to actually know which one of these was faster for your particular application, you would have to test it. You, you could create both a list stack and an array stack and test to see which one is faster. I have to say my guess is that for most applications, the array stack is faster, um, but quite possibly not by an amount that it would matter to. Anyway. The goal here was to show you how the, abs the stack type actually is an abstract type. The fact that we can implement these methods and basically abide by this contract of what those methods are supposed to do in two different ways. We can store the value as an array or we can store it in a linked list. And in that case, a singly linked list uh, works perfectly well even if it has immutable nodes.